again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. And welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and special edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT from WX Risk here in Central Virginia. Talking about This Week in Weather, uh, I'm also known as the Captain of Chaos, Colonel of Confusion, and the Commander of Catastrophe. So let's talk about This Week in Weather, specifically the next couple of days. Uh, two events here, a big, uh, the Nor'easter obviously is roaring up, going to hit the New England this weekend, and then a light uh, snow event for the lower middle Atlantic here on Monday. So let's get right to it. There's a picture of my smiling face from Richmond, Virginia. There's the Twitter page, there's a Facebook page, here's my email. First, we'll take a look at the Nor'easter. Uh, we're going to do that first. So this here is the um, 18Z NAM, and I like this solution a lot. Um, I think it's correct, and we'll go over that in a minute why, but uh, you can see that the low is uh, fairly close to the coast here. If you can't see it, let me highlight it right here right there that's where it is okay put it along 988 and notice that the rain snow line is way to the north it's even north west of worcester massachusetts and uh, most of connecticut's rain all over Rhode island you know and it's all up here in the elevation at this point now this is saturday at 1 p.m so the next image here this is going to show us saturday at uh, <clears throat> 3 p.m and when the low is a little further to the east, and as a result, the rain snow line is come a little further to the east as well. And you can see that right here. And uh, so as a result, it, but it's still it's very close to Worcester, Massachusetts, but it's still on top of, but it's still to the west of Boston and Providence, that sort of thing. It's gone over to snow in northeast Connecticut there as well, as you can see. Now, in this next image, this is valid for uh, Saturday at uh, 5 p.m. And it, uh, it's 22Z. And you can see that the uh, rain snow line, again, it is still, it's now between Worcester and Boston. You can still see it's west of Boston. It's in Providence, very close to there. But look at the amazingly heavy snow, which is formed in this, uh, just to the west of this line. Look at this stuff. Oh, my God. Uh, really incredible snow rates right in here. Just astronomical. And that's where the best snow is going to be, I think. Uh, right in this area, Very. this looks like a, a, a Providence, Worcester, a Concord type of snowstorm from what I can see, one of these classic type of New England nor'easters. And this is now for 7 p.m. And notice it's seven, on Boston, at 7 p.m., the rain snow line is still to the west of Boston. Uh, and down, you know, into, a, a, now it's reached the eastern uh, Rhode Island, Massachusetts state line. And again, you can see the tremendous snow area in this whole area, but right in here, really intense stuff, right up, to, right up against that boundary. Uh, you know, the circulation coming down like this, just pulling down the moisture from all the Atlantic Ocean into the cold air, and just just bombing that place out with snow. And this is uh, now for uh, 10 o'clock, no, 9 o'clock on Saturday evening, and the rain snow line has just finally reached Boston right there it's much just as the west of boston even heavier snow much heavier snow uh it's coming to an end now and it's it come to an end completely in northeast connecticut it's coming to an end here in worcester or very well will be shortly and then the monster snow and it's going on in west eastern interior massachusetts like i said just to the west of boston and then much of eastern and southeastern new hampshire and into interior uh, western and central uh, New England. Obviously, notice the uh, rain snow line is pushed inland here on the warm air. You can see that. That's not a surprise. Just to show you the difference here, you can see, um, you know, it's, it's rain snow here, and then it's right along the main coast, but it's fairly close to the coast, and then it gets pushed inland with the strong southeast winds. And finally, when the low pushes off the coast, it's still all rain, heavy rain, high winds, and the east, yeah, down east coast of Maine. Uh, but now at uh, 10 o'clock, no, excuse me, at uh, 11 o'clock on Saturday, Boston now has heavy snow. And this is when Boston gets its snow here, by 10, 11 o'clock, right in this area here. And then monster snow up into central and northern Maine and eastern uh, New Hampshire. So that's when it happens, not really before then. So, uh, you know, maybe at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, it changes into Boston and goes over, and then you get to several hours of snow in Boston. So the issue is how much snow. Now, this is the European model from Weather Bell, uh, Corey, and let me just make this very clear. Um, I'll change my marker here. You can see this, okay? Um, <clears throat> this is complete crap. Look at these enormous snow totals in here. Uh, in, in, I mean, it's just way overdone. 
Um, and the problem is, is measuring all the mixed precipitation as all snow. This is just way overdone. And uh, you can see that what happens, weather bell, weather models, they love to do these snow, makes the snow nuts go crazy. Uh, this is a much better snow map here. Uh, this is from um, Euroweather. Now look at the difference in, Ma in central Massachusetts. Look at the difference between 19 inches I guess that would be close to Worcester, or 12, 14, 18, 16 inches there. And this, I mean, good googly moogly, that is a big difference. And uh, the problem is, is that a lot of this falls in here as rain, and it takes a while for it to accumulate. Now, this is the European, um, you know, it, it's a medium range model. Uh, I think this is probably too light, the snow in interior uh, central Massachusetts, but it's, it's, it's a trend, it shouldn't be overlooked. One of the compromises between this and the extreme stuff we see on Weather Bell and uh, weather models are the folks from Pivotal Weather. And uh, this is uh, somewhat more reasonable. It still has 15, it has 10 to 15 inches in central Massachusetts in and around Worcester. Uh, that seems very reasonable. You got decent snow, several inches in northern, northeastern uh, Connecticut and uh, northwest Connecticut. Uh, a couple inches in the book in the Berkshires here. Very reasonable snow in eastern New Hampshire makes reasonable up into uh, western and central Maine. Uh, not is the extreme that you see there, but pretty close to the same. The real concern, of course, is the real uncertainty is this area here in terms of the snow. That's the real uncertainty. So you got to make a line somewhere to figure out what's going to happen. Uh, so it's going to be difficult. Now, this is the uh, 12Z, um, this is the GFS, yes, from Friday, uh, this afternoon. Now, notice it has a few inches in Boston when the snow finally gets in there. But all the big snow on this is actually to the west of Worcester. As you can see, it's all in western Massachusetts and down in, in northeast Connecticut and far northwest uh, uh, Connecticut there as well. This is the Connecticut River Valley, so the big snow is in here and in here, and it's to the west of Worcester up in this area. Um, so that's an interesting solution as well. It's probably not far off um, thinking that could be reasonable. You're getting some snow in, in, in Boston at the end of it. This is the uh, 18Z GFS. It has less snow in Boston, the 18Z, uh, more in Worcester, and more uniform in Connecticut here with several inches, but not not, not the 10-inch snow amounts there in Connecticut. Uh, uh, this is a nice uh, solution as well. You're going to have to draw a line someplace. I kind of like the 18Z NAM here a little bit. I have to tell you. Let me call it up on in one second. Uh, there it is. <clears throat> now, this is a lot of snow here. And now, this 18Z NAM, that this is what this is here. We're looking at the 18Z NAM earlier. And again, it's because of this enormous snow band right here in uh, east central and uh, eastern interior eastern massachusetts so uh is it going to be 17 18 20 inches i don't know if it's going to be that much but notice the intense difference on the snow there's boston very little on the coast a few inches inland six seven inches here to here in providence and north one socket up here maybe 10 inches and then a big big snow here in the worcester area up into interior southeastern new hampshire you know you're 12 inches in here potentially or more uh when it really comes down that seems very reasonable to me notice that western massachusetts does not get the big snow neither does northwest connecticut they get a little bit but not much um so uh, I think that's a very reasonable solution. All right, let's go on to the uh, system for Monday in the lower mid-Atlantic, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, Delaware. Uh, this is the uh, uh, high-resolution European model from 12Z Friday. And you can see that with, there's a southern piece of energy here, and there's a northern piece of energy there, and they are going to phase. Now, this is the 50-50 low, uh, which is the New England storm on Saturday. It goes up into that area, and it becomes the southeast Canadian low. So if this was a little further apart, so if this was, let's say, um, let me clear this out a little bit so you can see it. Uh, if the feature A, which is the uh, northern piece of energy in the polar jet stream, if that was over here, and this feature B was more like over here, you would have a much bigger storm forming much closer to the coast, which would be a, a major snowstorm early in the season for interior, uh, maybe western North Carolina, uh, much of Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, Delaware. But we don't, but it's close. That's the, that's the point here. All right, this is what it looks like Monday morning. Uh, the snow's coming in. Notice that along the North Carolina border, Roanoke is rain at this point. They're, they're mixed precipitation. That will change as the precipitation comes in heavier. It hasn't reached Richmond yet. It hasn't reached Charlotte's Fields up in this area here. And then uh, that's Monday morning. This is 7 a.m. on Monday. 
Now it is snow in uh, Roanoke and Lynchburg and, and uh, Charlottesville. Moderate snow in these areas here. And when it's coming down heavy, right along the border, it's going to be snow. Uh, and then the northern end goes up to the Pennsylvania-Maryland border, if you could believe that. So you're getting snow into D.C., Baltimore. Uh, uh, Harrisonburg right there, uh, but front wall further north, Strasburg further north, lighter snow. Again, up to Manassas, Fredericksburg getting a good snow. Richmond right on the edge here on the mixed precipitation, depending on how heavy it's coming down. And it also gets into, you know, central Del uh, eastern Maryland shore of the Delmarva. Not a big deal, but... You know, an early snow in December in La Nina, which is, you know, kind of unusual. This is 7 p.m. on mo on Monday. Now, it's actually gone colder a little bit uh, when the cold air returns into the Richmond area. So, and then you get a mixed precipitation in interior southeast Virginia, snow and rain mixed. And then this is uh, uh, the uh, snow map here, the European model. Uh, again, notice one or two inches on the north side of Richmond, very possible, Tappanic, Fredericksburg, uh, you know, Scottsville, uh, Lake Monticello, uh, Charlottesville, then over towards, you know, Lexington, that sort of thing. A very reasonable solution. It could be a little more to the north, a little less to the south. Depends on how it sets up. Uh, something to watch here. Uh, this is the Kashera snow, uh, European snow. A little higher, um, notice here in the Virginia Piedmont, Charlottesville down to Lynchburg. Some three and four inches. Now, I don't know if I buy that. Remember, the ground temperatures are really warm. It's not going to be a lot of sticking on the roads. Uh, this is mostly grassy surfaces, bushes, trees, the back porch, the front porch, the picnic tables, the car tops, that sort of thing. This is not a big snow. It's not going to get any worse than this, but it's not nothing. And you have to be aware that it's, that it's coming down the pike here. The 18Z GFS has a change. is coming towards the European solution. This was the 12Z run here. This is the 18Z run here. You can see, notice it had nothing in Virginia here at all. And now it's got some snow here uh, in south central Virginia. So this is a step in the right direction. Look where the low is way off the coast. The low here is a little bit, a little stronger, a little closer to the coast. So we'll see if the GFS continues that trend. And then finally... Uh, here is the extended European. This is December 15, 16. Now, the, what's going to happen is the pattern is going to turn warm after December 15 for a bit. Uh, we have a big uh, uh, upper low here forming in Alaska. That is a positive EPO. It's going to destroy the ridge on the west coast. So you're going to flood the area with Pacific air coming in, it looks like, to some degree. Now, we do have some blocking here in Greenland, and the Arctic Oscillation is negative. Uh, and we have a decent polar vortex here. But so before this happens, um, we have this feature right here. Okay, see that feature? That's a short wave in the southern jet stream. It could produce a moderate storm on the east coast. Rain, snow, winter storm, what have you. It looks pretty cold. Um, uh, you know, after this event on Feb December 7th or 8th, it gets cold for several days. Uh, so the ground temperatures will be colder. I don't know if this is going to be an inland coastal storm, an offshore storm, uh, you know, Ohio Valley. I don't, that I don't know. But there's something very de definite there in the southern shortwave, uh, southern jet stream there, uh, that's got potential before the pattern warms up after December 16th. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I'll see you over on the Twitter page and over on the Facebook page.